This is Twit. Now, before the tra tragic events in Charlottesville a little over a week ago, we were somewhat obsessed with another ideological controversy over the memo written by Google engineer James Daymore. Now, as I said on the show, I am sort of sick of talking about this personal memo, but I got a Twitter DM from a viewer who wrote, Google needs to do more to appeal to a diverse workforce. I think that the Daymore thing should be a catalyst to focus on how the tech industry can improve instead of a public drama about what's wrong with the way people think. I get that you're tired of having to talk about it, but I hope you'll talk about ways that they can make it a place where my daughters would want to work. So today we're talking to Sarah Zhang, senior writer at The Verge and author of the book, The Internet of Garbage. Welcome back to the show, Sarah. Hi. So you and Verge science reporter Rachel Becker wrote a piece called Science Doesn't Explain Text Diversity Problem, History Does. Now you write that, that something about American math and science education has changed in the last few decades, which has resulted in more women in STEM than ever before, except in tech where female representation is decreasing instead of increasing. Uh, what are some of the biggest reasons that you think this is happening? Well, I think that it has to be a toxic culture. Um, I think that there's a pretty damning graph in our article that shows uh, female representation increasing in all of the other STEM disciplines. You see uh, more women going into chemistry as a major. Uh, the majority of biology majors are women. Um, more women in math, more women in the physical sciences. It's you know ticking up and up and up, and then you have computer science, and for some reason, computer science just took a huge downturn in the representation of women, and it's not entirely clear why that's the case. Um, and you also see women leading away once they hit sort of that ten-year mark in the tech industry, and there's attrition in other fields for sure. It's just sort of a consequence of America not providing enough support to parents um, while our culture still expects women to take on the majority of the work in child rearing. Uh, but it's really pronounced in tech. In tech, it's a lot worse for whatever reason. And I think the clearest explanation is actually just that the culture is really toxic. That's the thing that, that's the hypothesis that makes the most sense with what we're seeing out of the industry and what makes the most sense with the numbers. When I was looking at that first graph that you were talking about, um, where it shows that dramatic drop of women in in the field, um, you know, uh, going after those degrees, the uh, computer and information sciences degrees, I couldn't help but be drawn to like the point at which it drops so significantly, right around 2000, 2001. I mean, any any ideas? I mean, obviously, you know, when you're talking about the tech industry in Silicon Valley, that's when th that's when the bubble burst. It really seemed like. Uh, how did how could that have had a role in this? I mean, every time you sort of see that these uh, that graph dip, you sort of do get sort of like a cultural landmark in which sort of the myths around computers are shifting and changing and solidifying around the idea of like young boy genius hackers and um, yeah. uh, college dropouts, but they're all, they're all men, you know, they're all men. They're all socially kind of socially awkward. They don't really care about people. A lot of the time they're portrayed as like straight up misogynistic. Um, they're portrayed as, Oh, like they're kind of loners or they like, they smell bad. They're like social <laughs> outcasts. And, um, and you know, you never really see these myths grow up around like women hackers or like strange, weird women who are uh, devoting all of their time on machines and then they strike it really rich. Like it's always for some reason men. Um, and like, for instance, you see sort of in the late sixties, uh, employers are shifting to using psychometric profiles to hire engineers just because it's like they're trying to build out a huge workforce and they don't really have much of an option, but the psychometric profiles are uh, the psychometric tests are built around personality profiles that are like, oh, engineers are very neurotic. They um, are are very, they're loners. They're not attracted to sort of social situations. Um, they uh, are more interested in things than people. And there's like a lot of coded language in these profiles around like masculinity and around ways in which it's inappropriate for women to behave. Um, and as sort of these cultural myths collide with actual hiring practices in the industry and what is expected of computer programmers, you see that dip over and over and over again, uh, where you see young girls getting the message that it's not okay to like computers, basically. 
And it's a self-perpetuating problem, right, mm -hmm. too? I mean, can you talk a little bit about, you know, I mean, we know that we need to see someone in a position before we can often, like, see ourselves in that position. But talk about a little bit about um, the attrition and how that creates more of a problem. Yeah. So, I mean, well, first, you, if you see an industry where there isn't anyone who looks like you, uh, would it really occur to you to go into that industry? I mean, for some people, they see that as a challenge, but that's like a and they go for it. But that's a kind of rare individual. Uh, usually you, you look to a role model and you follow your role model's path to success. Um, but if all these women are dropping out after the 10 year mark for reasons that are usually have to do with unfairness, like they're not promoted fast enough or they're just tired of dealing with constant sexual harassment or just a hostile workplace. Um, when you don't have senior women and you don't have women in, this, in these executive suites, you don't have women sitting on boards, uh, you look from the outside of the industry as a very young person, you go, oh, there isn't really a path for me here. Or, oh, there's no one to mentor me. Um, and you don't go in in the first place. Or when you do go in, it turns out, yes, there is no one to mentor you. There is no one to push you upwards um, or, to, or to pull you up, up the ladder. And that just turns into this vicious cycle. So I think another issue with the memo was a lot of the things that he wrote, uh, you know, touched a nerve with a lot of people and they were backed up with Wikipedia uh, links. But this is something that's been happening. You say every couple of years we hear the same uh, controversy come up again and again. And what is, I mean, what is the proven science about the difference between women's brains and men's brains? Well, there kind of isn't a lot. There's all these studies that say that there's sex differences. and But if you like look at the huge mass of studies, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of those differences turn out to be quite negligible or they don't they can't be replicated or um, like, for instance, there's there's like, you know, uh, this statistic that high achievers on the um, math part of the SAT, like, boys outnumber girls 13 to 1. And that was the case like decades ago. And then today, boys outnumber girls about 3 to 1 on that, like on scoring high on the math portion of the SAT. So that just fluctuates and you can't really take that as um, a, a quantifiable sex difference just because you've got that huge difference uh, just in a few decades. And uh, when you look at the whole, whole mass, like it's like, oh yeah, so men masturbate more. That's known for certain. Uh, men have more physical strength, and that's also known for certain. But the other sex differences, you can cherry pick the data and go like either way, really. You can tell a just so story about tech using cherry picked studies. You can tell that just so story to explain away why it is that men dominate the tech field. But you could have also cherry pick those stories to tell a just so story about why men never go into technology and the technology field is dominated by women and why don't men code? It's, um, the science doesn't really explain it. Yeah. It's almost like statistics, right? Like you can always find a, a statistic to support your, your thesis or whatever. Um, what I'm wondering is, all right, so very, very much so it seems like uh, by and large, the technology industry, so the industry, uh, when, when people have already graduated, moved into the industry, is repelling women, right? You say 41% of women are leaving tech companies after 10 years. That's compared to 17% men. What about girls' interest in these fields? Like, we're talking high school, graduating from high school. Is there is there a shift happening there as well before they even get close to the industry that can that can repel them? Oh yeah, they they tend not to even pick computer science as a major. They aren't even really interested in it. Um, even if even if uh, their math scores are just as good as the boys, mm -hmm. even if um, they're just as competent as all the young men around them who are deciding that computers are for them. Yeah. And so, are are they really go using those math skills to get into different uh, fields besides technology? I mean, what what of the like last ten news stories you might read on any tech publication about how women are treated in tech would make a woman, except for a woman like you were talking about that that really wants that challenge? Like, what what would make a teenage girl say like that sounds like a great job to have? I'd love to be Susan Fowler. <laughs> um, 
Well, I mean, you know, I think you know, there's all these initiatives out there to to get girls into coding and like and maybe maybe those things are are playing out. I actually don't know any teenage girls right now, so I can't really tell you what the teens are thinking. Um, it's uh, yeah, like I imagine though that like I don't think it's so much like like when you were a teenager, were you reading like the New York Times and going, oh wow, like this <laughs> sexual harassment problem yeah. at this company really no, I think it's really more representation in the media. Like mm-hmm. if I were a teenager and I saw the social network, I would not think computer programming was for me. Mm-hmm. And like it's like it is how uh, programming is represented in our culture and in pop culture and pop culture, reflects a lot of the biases in the industry and the industry reflects those biases back. It's just this feedback loop that can't seem to be broken. So is it a pop culture problem or is it a tech industry problem? Because I have a 14 year old at home and, you know, she's starting a freshman year of high school. She's taking honors algebra two and honors geometry at the same time. She loves math, but then at the same time she loves Instagram too. And all these images are women of women are coming at her, um, you know, just th- they're not doing math equations. They're doing this. So well, they're, do- they're duck facing. <laughs> yes. So is it, a, do you think it's a, is it a tech industry problem or do you think that it is a media general culture problem? I mean, it's like clearly both, right? Like when you're in college or getting ready to pick your major or whatever, you're not like, you know, you can like all of the celebrities that you like and you're still looking forward to your future and thinking about who you want to be. And you can envision yourself in certain positions and you can't envision yourself in others. Um, and I, I think it's it's going to be both is that like, who, what were your dreams growing up as a child, right? Like what, uh, who did you see in these movies? Who did you read about in these books? But also now you're like about to pick your major. Who are you seeing in the magazines? Who are you seeing in these companies, represented in these companies? Who, Who's in power? Mm-hmm. Uh, if all of these women are dropping out after 10 years of experience, all you're going to see is men in power. And that's like, you know, that might send a certain kind of message. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I really want to blame someone or some things. You have another statistic that says in uh, in 1985, women represented 37% of computer science bachelor's degree, where that bachelor's degrees, where it's now 20%. I mean, you could argue that in 1985, we had a lot, our diet of media was a lot less, it was a lot smaller than it is. I mean, just from there on, there was more TV, more movies, more you know DVDs, social media. Um, can we blame the media? Uh, I mean, maybe we could. Uh, I mean, it's also like you have to you have to consider that at this point, employers were um, so starting in in late sixties, early seventies, employers were aggressively using psychometric testing to to hire software programmers, and those psychometric tests were extremely biased on the sex side. So it could have just been a result of that is that all of these women were graduating from college and realizing that they couldn't get a job because, the hiring process was just stacked against them, period. And then like a bunch of women made a rational choice not to go into this field imagine, to begin with. Yeah. Who knows? Imagine that, women making rational choices. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much. It is a pleasure as always. Sarah Jong is a senior writer at The Verge. She can be found at Sarah Jong on Twitter. I highly recommend following her. Um, she has great tech stories, goes to all the important tech cases, and is just uh, pretty funny when you need it. And I think we all need a little more hilarity on great. Twitter these days. Thanks so much, Sarah. <laughs> Thank Thanks you, Sarah. for having me. Take Appreciate care. It.